This is ANF News. I am Kamil Sadiq. These are the major news headlines we are tracking this hour. TPLF forces report fresh attack by government forces in Mekede. Bukola Saraki urges Nigerians never to forget NSAS protest. Kaduna State makes vaccination compulsory for all civil servants. And in world news, North Korea confirms it has tested submarine-launched ballistic missile. French Army says it killed a woman in an anti-terrorist patrol in Mali. TPLF forces reports fresh attack by government forces in Mekele. Tigrayan forces say Mekele, the capital of the war-torn Tigray, has been hit a fresh airstrike for a second time this week. A member of the Tigray People's Liberation Front Central Committee tweeted about the airstrike being carried out in the city around 10.20 local time. Some Tigrayan residents have also confirmed the attack. Until now, the Ethiopian government is yet to confirm or deny the fresh airstrike. The Ethiopian Air Force carried out two airstrikes on Monday, saying it targeted communication infrastructure used by the TPLF. The United Nations said three children were killed in Monday's attack. Quara set to Old States Sports Festival in 2022 after setback due to COVID-19. The governor of Kwara State, Abdurrahman Abdurazak, has announced that the state will host the 2022 State Sports Festival. Abdurazak disclosed this while speaking at the closing ceremony of the 6th National Youth Game held in Ilori, the state capital, where Kwara finished 6th on the national medals table. Kwara ended the competition with a total of 32 medals including 10 gold, 10 silver, and 12 bronze, better than it did in 2019 when the state won 22 medals, including 3 gold. Malam Abdurrahman Abdurazak said his administration planned to hold the state sports festival this year, but could not do so because of the COVID-19 pandemic. He pledged that a large sporting event will hold early next year so as to keep all of the athletes and their synergies together to make them excel better in their respective field. Abdurazak was received by members of the Kwara State Sports Commission led by its executive chairman, Ola Mogaji. Bukola Saraki urges Nigerians never to forget NSAS protest. Some of the issues, I think people say them and think that the former Senate President of Nigeria, Dr. Bukola Saraki, has urged Nigerians to never forget the NSAS protest that rocked the nation last year. The protest, which lasted for days, was staged by Nigerian youths due to the incessant police brutality meted out to them. In a statement issued by the former Senate President, Saraki said his thoughts and prayers are with those who lost their lives, loved ones, sustained injuries, or sustained other losses. Saraki noted that it is worrying that despite the protests that rocked the nation, nothing has really been done to resolve the issues that caused the agitations. He further appealed to the Nigerian government to reform the police and justice sector. Kaduna State makes vaccination compulsory for all civil servants. The Kaduna State government has joined the federal government in ordering all civil servants in the state to get vaccinated against COVID-19. The state government said beginning from the last day of October, evidence of vaccination will be a requirement to gain access to their offices. According to the statement from Kaduna, apart from civil servants, visitors to government offices will need to present their vaccination cards or evidence of registration with the State Ministry of Health 
for the purpose of vaccination, with their protective masks worn before they will be allowed into the government offices. The government therefore advised residents to register at the nearest primary health centers for vaccination. According to data from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, Kaduna has since the outbreak of COVID-19 recorded 9,935 cases coming forth after Lagos State, the FCT and River State. While the state has successfully treated and discharged 9,756 people, 78 fatalities have been recorded. And in world news, North Korea confirms it has tested submarine-launched ballistic missile. State-owned media confirmed today that North Korea has successfully test-fired a new submarine-launched ballistic missile as the country seeks to flaunt its ever-expanding military capabilities. The confirmation came a day after South Korea's military said that it believed Pyongyang had fired a submarine-launched ballistic missile off its east coast. The latest test was the fifth in a series of missile launches since September. The Korean Central News Agency reported that the missile had lots of advanced control guidance technologies. Pyongyang is banned from developing nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles under Security Council resolutions and is subject to multiple sets of sanctions as a result. It says it needs its arsenal to defend against possible U.S. invasions. French army says it killed a woman in an anti-terrorist patrol in Mali. The French army has admitted that its troops shot dead a woman while conducting an anti-terrorist reconnaissance operation with Malian soldiers in the West African country. It was revealed that the woman died on Monday during a joint patrol in an area where elements of an armed terrorist group has been detected. In a statement, the army said an investigation has been opened to clarify the exact sequence of events and to shed full light on the combat action. The statement added that soldiers saw two individuals riding a motorbike, but they left it behind to flee into the undergrowth when they spotted the French and Malian troops. Army said it men engaged in the pursuit of one of the two individuals in the woods. Four warning shots were fired to stop him, but the latter moves further away. The individual turns sharply towards the soldiers who fire to neutralize the target and then discover that it is a woman suspected of being one of the people on the motorcycle. Investigation into the matter is expected to be completed soon. Deployed to Mali since 2013 because of deadly terrorist activities, 5,100 French soldiers currently in the Sahel will be reduced to roughly 3,000. European Special Forces deployed in Takuba Tax Force will be in charge of supporting the Malian military in combat. Unknown gunmen killed two traditional rulers in Imo State. Gunmen have reportedly killed two traditional rulers in Njaba local government area in Imo State, southeastern Nigeria. Up to 20 local kings from different communities in the area were in a meeting when gunmen invaded the venue and started shooting sporadically. Some other traditional rulers sustained gunshot wounds in the head while others sustained injuries in their hands. Separatist groups agitating for a breakaway Biafra state have been accused as usual in the fresh attack. Last Sunday, gunmen also attacked a police post in neighboring Ebony state, killing a police officer and burning two patrol vehicles. Meanwhile, the governor of the state, Ope Uzodima, said he is shocked by the news of the attack on traditional rulers by gunmen in the state. There is no compelling need to strengthen the security situation at the grassroots. Because if you look at the events of a few days, 
these bandits has left to the urban area and they've gone back to the fringes and we cannot allow our brothers and sisters at the remote villages to continue to be vulnerable Uzadima commiserated with the people of Injaba and vowed to ensure that the perpetrators of the attack are brought to book. What food program wants a food court in northern Nigeria? The United Nations World Food Program, WFP, has warned that it may soon be forced to cut food rations to more than half a million women, men, and children in northeastern Nigeria. According to the WFP, the situation has been worsened by the social economic fallout from COVID-19, high food prices and limited food supply, and also due to the increase in the number of internally displaced people in September. The food agency spokesperson said cutting food rations is the highest the body has experienced since 2016. He noted that at least 55 million US dollars is needed in a matter of weeks for life-saving humanitarian work. Approximately 4.4 million people are facing acute food insecurity in the conflict-affected states of Borno, Adamawa and Yobe. So far, the World Food Programme stated that the number of internally displaced people in northeastern Nigeria has been rising steadily and reached a new all-time high of over 2 million in September, while current food security analysis showed that 4.4 million people in the same region are suffering from food insecurity. Additionally, over 1 million children are malnourished. For five years, the World Food Programme has provided food and nutrition assistance to food insecure people, displaced families in camp, and to vulnerable people living in host communities thanks to generous contributions from countries and private donors and to sustain humanitarian operations in northeast nigeria until march 2022 wfp said it urgently requires 197 million u.s dollars